SpongeBob Lost PSP Commercial On November 19th, 2009, a video was uploaded onto YouTube by Jan Tista999. The video was a Comedy Central commercial promoting the SpongeBob Think Happy Day Captain Secret Marathon. At the very last second of this promo, we get a one second glimpse of what appears to be a SpongeBob commercial made to promote the PSP version of Little Big Planet. This is hella interesting. There is no information on the internet regarding this lost SpongeBob PSP commercial. This random video uploaded in 2009 is the only evidence of its existence. The full version of this SpongeBob commercial is still yet to resurface online. Kenya Filthy Frank Song Back in 2013, a video was uploaded by the one and only Filthy Frank, who needs no introduction. I'm sure most of you are aware with who Filthy Frank is. The video shows how different cultures pick up girls, and when the Kenya part comes up, a song is played for a few seconds. <laughs> Ever since this video was uploaded, people have been attempting to identify what song this is. Where did it come from? As it turns out, nobody can find this song, and very little information is known about it apart from the 4 seconds which can be heard. The lyrics of the song translate to, a baby boy has been born, we. Judging by what the lyrics say, most users online have come to theorize that this is a Christian song, maybe a Christmas song. This has been a mystery for a whole decade now. It's just so strange how a song like this can just disappear completely. Lost Bootleg DS Game On August 27th, 2023, a post was made onto the Lost Media Wiki forums about a Lost Bootleg DS game. So a few years back, I found this weird bootleg copy of Soul Calibur 3 at a flea market. These photos were taken before I lost it when we moved. When I put in the game, I just got a blank thumbnail and it just said New Soul. When I started up the game and it showed the title screen, the top screen was completely blank. One of the characters on the title screen was some random casual male dancer, and Link, who isn't even supposed to be in 3. Oh well, it was a bootleg after all. The screen also flickered and blacked out frequently. The colors were also very dim, something I saw throughout playing. Also, the game was either silent or played the same song throughout. Well, you also got the classic Soul Calibur sound effects when you select anything. Once I tapped the screen to start, it led straight into the character select, with Soul Calibur 2 portraits on the top. The available characters were Link, from the Legend of Zelda and the GameCube version of Soul Calibur 2, Cassandra, Talum, Yoshimitsu, Heihachi, from Tekken and the PS2 version of Soul Calibur 2, Necrid, Zhanghua, and Spawn, in the Xbox version of Soul Calibur 2. The dancer on the title screen wasn't there either. I had to use the D-pad to scroll through this selection, then tap the touch screen to pick the character. Once I selected my character, a match started and I saw that the graphics were terrible stop motion. My opponent, Link, was mostly just standing there, only swiping at me once in a while, at first, I wondered why my buttons didn't work, until I realized I had to use the touch screen to do anything. After I won the match, the screen went black and cut straight to the character creation. It looked like flash animated clip art and the accessories were all poorly drawn. I made my character, but every now and then, the screen would fade out and flash to a sepia colored full body portrait of some random Soul Calibur character in the pose of that one body drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, but with glowing white eyes and a stern expression. When it cut back to creation mode, I just finished my character. The screen faded to black again and this time, nothing happened. 
After several minutes, I decided to restart the game. After tapping the title screen, it just faded to a black with an animation of red smoke with the words, The End. While something quite similar but poorly made to the beginning of this played in the background before fading out. Then it just froze. The game was so terrible and boring, I didn't bother with it again until I suddenly remembered it while looking through old photos. I was wondering, has anyone else come across a copy and played it, out of curiosity? Definitely very strange and bizarre stuff. And yeah, no one knows anything about this bootleg. A couple people are questioning whether this is even real. As this post is formatted like a common lost episode creepypasta or ARG. Gremlins PS2 Game Also known as Gremlins Revenge or Gremlins Stripe vs Gizmo is a cancelled third person shooter video game that had been developed throughout the early 2000s by LSP for both the GameCube and PlayStation 2. It was made to continue the plot established in the original movie and its sequel, Gremlins 2 The New Batch. LSP first announced this game April 15th, 2003, and was set to release late 2003 in only Europe. However, the game just never came out. The game was cancelled and left unreleased. No explanation as to why this game was cancelled has ever been stated, and to this very day, no ROM has been made available to the public. The only things we have of the game include a handful of screenshots, the game's opening cutscene, and a video that shows a 3D model of Gizmo from the game. Lost Seashore Anime Short Film on March 5th, 2022, a user who goes by WolfieBoy5 had made a post in the unidentified media section on the Lost Media Wiki forums. WolfieBoy5 had discussed an unidentified seashore anime short film that they can't seem to find anywhere. This post has gained a lot of views. Despite many people taking interest in this post, no one seems to know what this is. When I was young, my older sister had a DVD of anime short films that, when calling her recently, doesn't remember how she acquired it. One short I remember vividly. It was about a boy who goes down to the seaside and tosses a rock at the water. Immediately after, a shark towers over him and angrily throws the rock back at him, with a bump on his head. The rest of the short consists of the boy doing things to the water that cheeses off the sea creatures. The short fades to black between each hijink. There is no dialogue throughout. At the end, all the sea creatures get fed up with the boy and drag him into the water via net. The short ending with a sound of a ploop. My sister has, over time, lost the DVD and trying to find the short online has proved fruitless mostly because I don't know the name of the short or of who made it. I also remember another short that was on the disc, but not as much. It was about a guy being chased by other agent-like guys that either led to or took place at the rooftops. Eventually, the other agent guys surround the main character, and while I don't remember what one of them said to him, but he ended with, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard leaving the guy shocked and devastated while the agents mock him. Another clue, the dialogue was in English. I believe it was back in 2000, 2002, 2003 tops, when I saw it on the DVD, but the disc could be older. Like I said, I'm struggling to find the seashore short, nor the DVD that came with it. I wonder if anyone out there has a clue of what I'm talking about. This user had then made drawings of what they remember this unidentified short film looking like. A lot of people became interested in the post, being very curious as to what anime short film this user was referring to. However, no one managed to bring up any suggestions. No one knew anything about this mysterious cartoon. Wolfieboy5 randomly came back to this forum post December 7th, 2022, stating some theories as to how they could have possibly acquired this DVD. 
I've been trying to look for this myself, but I'm just as clueless as before. To review, my guesses as to where this DVD came from is 1. An American anime magazine that gives free DVDs. 2. An anime showcase giveaway from possibly a convention. 3. A DVD of student films in anime style from an animation school. Or 4. This is a case of this being an elusive golden bootleg, or EGB. Those are the only ways I can imagine a random fellow anime lover would get such a thing and then give to my sister. Do any of you watching this know anything about this short film? Very interesting stuff. It's crazy that no one has been able to find it and just maybe by including it within this video, it will be found soon. Woogie World Woogie World was an educational multiplayer online game from 2008 created by Children's Way. Woogie World was a program made to help with socializing online and help with real life situations. You could do all sorts of things with this program such as customizing your own house and avatar and joining a range of clubs like music club, reading club and science club. Woogie World's national launch engaged in over 50,000 elementary schools around the nation. There is a good chance some of you remember this game. The game many years later had shut down. The game is not playable anymore and has fallen completely lost. Abraham Lincoln Pizzeria Orlando Commercial August 7th, 2023 a post was made within the unidentified media section on the Lost Media Wiki forums. Back in September 2014, I went to Orlando. While I was in my hotel room, I recall seeing an ad on the TV that was for some Abraham Lincoln themed pizza place. It was named something similar to him. In the ad, it was just like any other pizza commercial, showing different kinds that they serve and Lincoln's face would show up on the screen at random points, like overlaying a pizza. I could be totally way off, but this is what I remember from almost nine years ago now. However, ever since then, whenever I try to search online for it, I can't find it. Not only that, but I could never find any pizza place that has anything to do with Abraham via Google Maps in these years I've looked. So, as uninteresting as this sounds, I would like to see this ad again, since it would be pretty nostalgic, and would also like to know what in the world this pizza place is even called and where it was at. The post went pretty unnoticed. No one as of writing this has replied to this forum post. This case of unidentified media was included in an unidentified media iceberg, and is how I became aware of this peculiar case. The iceberg was actually created by YouTuber Semi Semi Deuce. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. You are awesome, and yeah, shout out to you, dude. You'll notice a lot of cases within this video are entries from this iceberg. I honestly really, really want to do a video just dedicated to unidentified media. Unidentified media from you guys, obscure cases from the Lost Media Wiki forums and Reddit. I feel like that would be really dope, so yeah, if you guys want to see that, just let me know. Nickelodeon Hamster Wheel Incident A whole six years ago, on December 18th, 2017, a post was made onto the tip of my tongue subreddit. The post detailed a very strange memory of something once seen on Nickelodeon. When I was about 16, I came home from hanging with friends. I was a huge cartoon fan, still am, grabbed some food and settled into my bed to watch Nickelodeon. I knew it was Nick because it was the last channel I watched that day and no one shared the TV in my room. So I turn it on to see this creepy black, white, and gray scene where hundreds of nude humans are walking in a line over these hills in the background towards these giant hamster wheels in front of the scene. 
They're walking towards the wheels as a few people are already in the wheels walking endlessly and mindlessly in this robotic zombie-like state. The people walking towards the wheels are also in this similar state, as if there is no life within their eyes. They're just cold robotic. There's this wind-like noise, whistling in the background. It looks real, not animated. And as I watch in awe at this dark scene, I come to similar conclusion and ask myself why Nick would have something so live and non-action. As the entire scene keeps just repeating itself of more humans walking towards and in these hamster wheels. I start thinking maybe it's just some weird short and it's kinda cool in a dark sort of way. But minutes go by and it starts to get dull watching this same scene not doing anything else so I quickly change the channel to something else when in a split second I realize, wait a minute, WTF did I just watch? And change it back immediately only to find Spongebob on mid episode. You could tell Spongebob was on for a while, not like the weird short played first and it just came on or anything. Freaked out, I kept going back to surrounding channels thinking that maybe it wasn't actually on Nick, but nothing had the hamster wheel video on. I have tried to research what this was for years and never have been able to find anything remotely similar. Not sure if this was some sort of broadcast interference or something out of this world, but if anyone has any information slash a logical explanation, I would greatly appreciate it. Like I said before, this post was made 6 years ago, and despite it gaining lots of traction and eyes, it seems that nothing at all has been found of this. Many agreed that this could have simply been a dream, however OP declares that this was definitely real. I do have a feeling that this could be fake, it could be just a troll trolling away. The user who created this post has since been suspended. Cat Roots Cat Roots is a very mysterious Nintendo 64 game which has very little details. This game was shown at E3 2000 through an animated teaser on a display booth at Nintendo's booth. This animated tech demo was all that was shown. The booth didn't really provide information about the game or show off any actual gameplay. Interestingly, when IGN had questioned some of the Nintendo employees about the Cat Roots display, they didn't seem to know much as well, simply stating, we were told to put it here. Shigeru Miyamoto was eventually interviewed, and was asked about the game. He would confirm that the game was being developed by Marigold Management, and an official announcement on the game was yet to be made. However, nothing was ever released. Cat Roots would stay in mystery and was never mentioned by Nintendo again. Cat Roots was being developed pretty late into the Nintendo 64 lifespan. The game was likely cancelled due to the release of Nintendo's next console, the Nintendo GameCube, releasing just a year later in 2001. Charlie version of Caillou On the Lost Media Wiki forums, a very odd post was made December 5th, 2020 by user Timon. Back around 2010, give or take a few years, there was a version of Caillou that aired simultaneously with the broadcast of the original show. It aired on an alternate channel number among my channel options for Xfinity slash Comcast TV. It was the exact same show except for one key difference. The title, title character, and dubbing all changed Caillou's name to Charlie. So the theme song sang Charlie even. I have never seen any further info on this, but I have zero doubt in my mind that this was a thing. Some were quick to dismiss this post. This couldn't have been real. However, Taimon was quick to respond regarding its legitimacy. It's apparently vivid enough that they remember pointing it out to other people in their house at the time, and recalling it to friends. Many people also suggested that what they saw was most likely the animated series Charlie and Mimo. I mean, this Charlie character in a way does kinda look like Caillou, 
Well, for starters, this was literally Caillou with a simple name change, not a similarly named cartoon unrelated to Caillou. Also, it was spelled Charlie IE, not Charlie EY, like this other cartoon. Thanks for the feedback so far, but I can confirm this is not something I imagined or am mistaking as anything other than what I said. I think the only additional info I can provide is that this aired simultaneously with Caillou, if not on another PBS channel that had a different time zone. It also may have aired along with those audio description narrations PBS channels sometimes use. And to reiterate, this was literally the same show as Caillou, but retitled Charlie. The logo, intro song, and script dialogue all switched Caillou to Charlie. But there weren't differences in design or anything else. At the time, I assumed this was done as a means to localize the kid's uncommon name, but I simply can't find any info on it. I'm certain someone could corroborate this. I'm not sure why people keep thinking this would have been a dream. I did know one person Charlie at the time, but I remember what I've mentioned having happened, not simply feeling like it may have happened or something so vague as to be mistaken. And no, no change of design, no clothes alteration, nothing. It was the same episodes airing in simultaneous syndication, but with a name change. Imagine if you were watching Nickelodeon one day and Hey Arnold was on. Except you flip to like, an alternate Nickelodeon station provided through satellite TV, and it was the same episode of Hey Arnold you were just watching, except Arnold's name is Archie in this version. I think I may have seen this airing of two versions more than just the first time. Like, I didn't go out of my way to sit through it. But I think even back then, I tried to look it up, but even back then, I didn't find anything explaining it. Tymon also stated that they lived in Indiana at the time, an area boarding Cincinnati, Illinois. This post blew up. Like, legit gained a lot of traction. I mean, why wouldn't it? This all sounds so insanely bizarre. This post thread goes on for 18 pages. However, no leads or anything have been made at all. There has been heavy debate within this thread discussing the legitimacy of this Charlie Caillou dub. And when I say heavy, I am not exaggerating. This thread went insane. The majority of people believe that this Charlie version was never real and doesn't exist. It's most likely that this post is simply bait to troll. User Media Monster put it very well and explained why this whole thing is likely false. After like 5 months of this thread being inactive, Tymon would come back in 2023 and explain in huge detail that this wasn't bait or a troll and how this vague memory of theirs was real and then another 6 pages of debate would ensue and I feel that this whole thing is either a lie and troll, or they are just misremembering, I don't know. The mind is weird sometimes and can make up weird things like this. But yeah, just including this within the list just to create some conversation around it. I'm not saying it's real lost media, but I'm also not saying it's fake lost media. It's We don't know anything, there's no evidence of anything. Just putting it here, just for conversation and fun. It's funny. It's kind of funny. Cecile and her very own universe. This was a 2-3 animated segment that aired as part of the last 5 episodes of the Fred on Your Head show on Noggin in 2001. Cecile and her very own universe was about a girl named Cecile who lived in the huge sprawling underground future world of Metro. While everyone is busy digging to the center of the giant planet, Cecile does the opposite. No one knows she has a life on the surface. As of today, only just a short clip of the show exists, as well as a few couple available images. Germa Lost Media On my 50 Unusual Cases of Lost Media video, I talked about the Lost Germa Egg Stream, a live stream in which streamer Germa985 eats 24 hard-boiled eggs. This egg stream from 2012 has become Lost Media. 
Now, it turns out, this isn't the only piece of Germa Lost Media. There is a lot of Germa Lost Media. Like, a lot. Classics such as vlog What Do You Want to See from July 2011 is lost media and hasn't resurfaced since its deletion. Vlog Fist Bumpin' from July 26, 2011 has gone missing. Vlog Q&A Time has become lost media. I could just go on and on, but I won't. So yeah, if you're a fan of Germa 985, there is a lot of interesting Germa related lost media. Alien Jump Scare Video In the unidentified media section on the Lost Media Wiki forums, a post was made June 23rd, 2022 by user Pinkersketch. They recall seeing an Alien Jump Scare video on YouTube back in late 2008 to 2009 and haven't been able to find it since. When I was younger, I used to be obsessed with aliens. So I would search around YouTube, looking for various alien and or UFO sighting videos. I specifically remember accidentally stumbling across a jump scare video simply titled something like Alien Sighting or UFO Sighting. Though I can't remember the exact length of the video, it was fairly short. The video started with an outside shot of a plain white house. There was no music, just a slow zoom in of the house. Eventually, when the cameras got close enough, an image of an alien, in air quotes because I'm not sure if the image was meant to be an alien or not, would flash on the screen and a stock scream sound effect would play. I believe it was one of these. As for the alien image used, I can almost visualize the general idea of what the alien looked like, but I can't describe it in a detailed enough way. The general idea being, the alien looked more like a blue wrinkly man than a stereotypical grey alien with a big head and black eyes. I think it was looking slightly to the left and was wearing a black hood. But that description is so generic it could fit a billion different things. I'm not even sure I'd recognise it if I saw it. Like, I don't know, imagine this but like, blue and wearing a dark hood. That's the closest comparison I can think of. The house looked something like these, just a little more run down. No one was able to help find it. Maybe it's somewhere out there, or perhaps it's deleted off the platform. Beavis and Butthead do Hollywood. Beavis and Butthead Do Hollywood is a lost 1998 PlayStation game which has never seen the light of day. The first time this game was shown was at E3 1998. The only footage that was captured of this game at E3 was this YouTube video uploaded in 2014. At 1 hour and 24 minutes in, the lost Beavis and Butthead game appears. The game featured early models of Beavis and Butthead taken from the original show, and featured walking animation and the game's HUD, with unfinished graphics of the town the game took place in. This game was then later highlighted in both the Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine's 114th issue, and the Game Informer magazine's 66th issue. These magazines would give new images of the game and feature some information about it. The Game Informer magazine interestingly listed the game as 80% complete, and had a release date of November 1998. November arrived and nothing of the game appeared. There was no release and the game fell silent. However, three months later, the game would appear in the Electronic Gaming magazine once again. It was featured in the February 1999 issue of their magazine run. The game's title changed, changing from Beavis and Butthead do Hollywood to simply just Beavis and Butthead. The magazine would feature brand new information and pictures of the game, and stated it was set for a release of February 1999. February 1999 came and went, and you'll, you'll never guess what happened. The game was never released. No information about this mysterious game has since come out. It's completely unknown why this game got cancelled. What happened to it, we may never know. 
Nickelodeon 90s film about new shoes. On the Lost Media Wiki forums, a post was made in the Unidentified Media section on June 24th, 2020. A user who goes by YouTube has been in search for a short 90s Nickelodeon film about new shoes. If anything, it was a filler or bumper that they aired between shows back in the early 90s. I would not be surprised if this was something they also aired in the late 80s too, or at the very beginning of Nickelodeon's creation. If I had to guess, maybe it was Canadian, as that was a country where the channel would get some of its content from. But that's a total stab in the dark. As for the short film itself, I remember seeing it numerous times as a kid. It started out with a young teenage girl with a raggedy pair of sneakers going to the mall with her parents. I want to say we only ever heard the mum or the dad, but I can't be 100% on that, to buy a new pair. The shoes are destroyed, and after buying a brand new pair of shoes, just like the ones she destroyed, her parents say they're going to go home, or so I think, and the girl says she'd prefer to walk home instead. Her parents say that's okay, but don't get your new shoes dirty. She says she won't, and then we proceed to see a montage set to in the Hall of the Mountain King where the girl walks home and gradually destroys her new pair of shoes. I remember her jumping into puddles, but the one main image that sticks out is gum getting stuck, I want to say both underneath the shoe and on the laces and the girl's finger trying to get it off. The short film ends with the girl getting home, and her new pair of sneakers look just like the old ones she had to replace. I vividly remember seeing this as a kid in the early 1990s on Nickelodeon, but I've never been able to find it anywhere online. It would always air in between shows as a bumper or a filler. It was later mentioned that this was entirely live action, not animated. This post gained lots of traction, this sounded like some pretty interesting stuff. YouTuber Wang had made mention of this lost short in a video dedicated to Nickelodeon Lost Media. A lot of people in the comments of the video stated they too remember this short, with this short specifically being seen on Eureka's Castle. Eureka's Castle is an American children's puppet TV series created by Debbie Beast, Husey Cash, and R.L. Stein. Yes, R.L. Stein, the novelist behind the Goosebumps books. This Eureka's Castle show had in fact contained little shorts in between its own segments. Opie themselves stated that they did in fact watch the show as a kid, so this sounds very plausible. Opie interestingly ended up also finding a forum post by a user back in 2014, who was as well searching for this exact short. They described the short the pretty much exact same way, containing only minor differences and other interesting tidbits regarding it. Over three years after this post being made, some development was made by user Hexagon175. While it isn't the episode, it might help guide in the right general direction. During my search for this clip that comes up from time to time, I ran into some wiki about Nick shows, it seems that it's contained in show 149. Live action, a boy dirties up and wears out his brand new shoes throughout the day. From what I see, this is the 49th episode of the show after they cut the show time to a half hour, as well as cuts of the original hour long episodes. Here is a listing of the episodes. It's very incomplete and limited, with many entries not viewable. It's worth noting the wiki lists the source as anonymous, meaning it could be from a source on the inside, even R.L. Stein. Again, he seems to have claimed to have tapes of the episodes, or even someone just writing in fake info to get folks riled up. I guess it comes down to finding dates this first showed up on, or subsequent airings and seeing if there were any recordings made of the channel that day as I feel this is likely going to be the only way we'll see it for now if it is floating on the net. Many episodes of Eureka's Castle has since become lost media, including of course, Show 149, which apparently contains this lost short. I mean, who wrote all of this information about Show 149? 
Do they have tapes of the show and this episode with them? Yeah, very, very mysterious stuff. Teletoons Total Drama Avatar Creator Around the time Total Drama World Tour was being premiered, an Avatar Creator game had been released for Canadian users to make their very own avatars to use on the now defunct Total Drama Online website. This Avatar Creator was available to use for a while until the Total Drama Online site shut down in 2014. Many parts of this website were left unarchived, including of course this Avatar Creator. The SWF file for the game has not been retrieved, and it is not known how it can be retrieved. The game is completely lost. The only footage online that exists of this Avatar Creator was recorded by a developer who helped work on the game. Luckily they recorded this, otherwise no footage of this game would exist today. Gmod iOS version I received some messages on Instagram by a user who goes by Val, telling me about some sort of leak regarding an iOS version of Gmod. I honestly don't know what to think of this. I don't know if any of this is real, but yeah, just including this just to bring up some discussion about potential lost media. The messages went as follows. Hey, saw your recent video and thought I should message you on Instagram about this. Back in 2012, I remember there was a leak showing off a beat version of a Gmod iOS version. I took some screenshots of this to show to friends and stuff. Here are the photos. Since then, I have not been able to find anything more about it. And it looks like the whole leak has been forgotten about as I can't find an article or anything about this. It appears these screenshots came from something called ADC News, a website that appears to talk about different games, which I can't seem to find any information on. This is too strange. Am I being goofed right now? Is this all a hoax and I'm just talking about nothing? Let me know your thoughts on this. I'm curious if you guys will be able to bring up any evidence to prove that these screenshots are real. Blu-ray Poppy Playtime Scary Face Twitch Stream During October of 2021, YouTuber and streamer Blu-ray had done a live stream playing the horror game Poppy Playtime. During this live stream, Blu-ray had made a very unsettling face. The face was ridiculousness, and of course due to its ridiculousness, it caused someone to screenshot it and upload it to his Discord. The original livestream which this famous screenshot came from has gone missing. The livestream has become lost media. It was removed from Blu-ray's Twitch channel and the only clip VOD of Blu-ray pulling this face has expired. Blu-ray himself made attempts to find this original livestream. He explained he made the scary face within the first 10 minutes of the stream and even debunked a rumor that the screenshot was an edited photo of another image. Blu-ray was unsuccessful in finding the image. It seems that we are stuck with this original screenshot. Strange Green Man Cartoon Three years ago on the tip of my tongue subreddit, a post was made by user Sarah Animations who presented some strange cartoon featuring a disturbing green man they saw as a child. They haven't been able to find it since. When I was younger, probably the mid to late 2000s, I remember watching this short on Cartoon Network that really freaked me out. The characters and locations looked like they were made from clay, and it was animated using stop motion. It's featured a small green nearly bald man who looked like a mix of a zombie and Igor. The man had strange puckered lips and not too many features. I don't remember exactly what happened but I do remember two specific scenes. Mildly graphic, 
a scene where the man is eating wet, red guts and staring into the camera. I can't remember what they were from. A scene where the man is walking across a hill at night, there are stars in the sky and trees in the background. I remember watching this animation late at night, but late at night is very subjective when you're young. I'm fairly certain I was watching Cartoon Network, which makes me think that maybe I stayed up late enough for it to switch to Adult Swim. I wouldn't be surprised if this happened to be some weird experimental animation from them. Any help would be appreciated. I've been looking for this short for years now, and honestly at this point I'm thinking it could have been a very strange dream or something. This post blew up, having almost a thousand upvotes. However, despite the popularity and possible suggestions this mystery received, still to this day, it has remained as unsolved. Donkey Kong Coconut Crackers During the early 2000s, Rare had been developing all sorts of different video games for Nintendo's Game Boy Advance and GameCube systems. One of these games was known as Donkey Kong Coconut Crackers. This was a puzzle game with an isometric view. Donkey Kong would drop coconuts filled with paint and the player needed to use this paint to make squares and rectangles. Kremlings occasionally show up within the game messing up the player's progress. A playable demo was created for E3 2001 and demo videos were released. September 2002, Microsoft had purchased Rare. Rare would end up cancelling a lot of the games they had been developing. This, of course, included Donkey Kong Coconut Crackers. The game's idea was reworked into a Game Boy Advance game called It's Mr. Pants, featuring Rare's unofficial mascot, Mr. Pants. Ever since the game was cancelled, no playable demo of Donkey Kong Coconut Crackers has seen the light of day. Johnny Test Pitch Pilot Johnny Test is an animated TV series which follows the adventures of Johnny Test, a suburban boy who lives with his super genius 13 year old twin sisters, Susan and Mary. These two are scientists and conduct many experiments on their brother which results with lots of madness and badness. In 2004, a pilot had been created. This pilot was produced a whole year before it was picked up by Kids WB. There is very little information known about the pilot. It apparently was animated in Flash, contained an American cast, and was redone as the first episode of the series. As of today, the only things of the pilot which are available online include a few screenshots and a promo. No other footage has resurfaced. Spoken Word Experimental Piece I got some messages on my Instagram a while back, informing me of an obscure and interesting mystery. This was the Reddit post made on r slash tip of my tongue. Sometime in 1992 to 1993, my dad recorded this spoken word experimental piece that might have been made with those learn in your car language cassette tapes. It consisted solely of the human voice. There was no music, no noise, only the human voice from what my dad recalls. There might have been different voices asking if the listener spoke their language. This was asked in multiple languages such as Italian and French. However, my dad is unsure if there were more languages or less. The piece would constantly cut to audio of a foreign man saying the phrase, do you speak English? Voices would possibly jump from left to right speakers and eventually start overlapping. From what my dad can remember, it was quite long and repetitive, possibly 13 to 14 minutes in length. It was in HQ quality, could have been a CD. It was aired on CKUT 90.3 FM at around 4 in the morning on a fill-in show. Very bizarre stuff. Do any of you have any idea on what this could be? Famicom Cycle The Famicom Cycle is a display unit for the Famicom that was used in Japan. It was created by Nintendo in cooperation with Kansai Cycle Sports Center, a bicycle theme park in Osaka. 
10 units were installed in 1988. This Famicom Cycle unit had pedals which would be used to control the games. The units were removed in 2009, and their current whereabouts are unknown and missing. Blood and Guts Nickelodeon Bumper August 6, 2018 a video had been uploaded onto the YouTube platform by a YouTube channel that goes by Vortex360. The video was titled Nickelodeon Blood and Guts. This is a found piece of media of what is theorized to be a UK animation which supposedly aired on Nickelodeon. Most of the things that are known about it is speculation. A post was made onto Reddit December 24th, 2018 by Reddit user Scootle Scootle. They detailed how for the longest time, they were the only one who remembered this Nickelodeon bumper. They couldn't find anything about it, and for some reason, when telling everyone about it, no one believed them. That was until they managed to find an episode of it online. Interestingly, they state that there was at least one more episode of this series, specifically containing a chandelier. The second bumper to this day has not been found yet. Disney Magic Castle Online Disney Magic Castle was a Flash-based virtual world which had been created by Disney. This was released in 2008, and only made for users in Japan. The game is very obscure, it's pretty hard to come by any information online about it, and most people don't know of its existence. It looks really cool though. It makes use of pixel art graphics, and makes use of some currency system. It's baffling to me how something that looks this neat and professional can just fall into major obscurity like this. A user on the Lost Media Wiki who goes by Swan Lake had attempted to revive this game. Going through a bunch of Wayback Machine pages, they got at least one version of the Flash game. However, upon opening the SWF file, discovered most of the game's sprites were managed on the server's end. This virtual world was shut down in 2011 and has since become lost media. It is unable to be played nowadays. Mystery Woman with Cat Winged Glasses and a Big Bun On the tip of my tongue subreddit, a post was made February 14th, 2020 by user 8 Penny Pie. This woman with cat winged glasses and a big bun on her head has bat wings from 90s early 2000s. Find this woman. This image was posted to r slash what is this thing. We are trying to figure out what this lady is from. This lady looks very familiar to many people but no one can pinpoint where. I assume that the dog in this photo might also be from the same show or movie but don't know for sure. I'm guessing this would be mid-90s, early 2000s given the age of myself and the other Redditors that find this familiar. Show slash whatever that we've looked into, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Invader Zim, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, Doug, Sideways Stories, Magic School Bus, and more. So many, it's hard to remember off the top of my head. Anyone else recognize her? But more importantly, anyone know where this elusive lady is from? Many people for years now have been trying to find out where this woman is from. What animated show? What animated movie? What book? No one knows. There's a good chance that this illustration isn't from anything. Perhaps it's simply just an original character from the artist who made the wooden art. And it just has a very familiar look to it. However, if you do recognize who this woman is from, then you'll solve a pretty cool mystery. Runaway Sway Interview On Instagram, I received some messages by a user who was informing me about an intriguing piece of lost media. I'm pretty much just going to read what I got messaged. I believe that's the best way, as he explained it very well. But yeah, shout out to you man, I really appreciate you suggesting this case of lost media to me. So, I'm sure you're all probably aware of this particular Kanye gif. Over the course of the last 4 or 5 years, people have been asking where this gif came from. 
Well, it came from an interview he did with MTV back in 2010. October 23rd, 2010 to be specific. It was an interview following the initial screening of his film Runaway. In it, him and the interviewer, Sway Holloway, take questions from the audience directly from Twitter and answer questions about the movie, what he was up to at the time, he was about to release his album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by that point, and a bunch of other stuff. Long story short, the interview is lost outside of a 20 second segment and pictures. All the links and flash files are completely dead. And despite all of the efforts over the past two years especially, not one person has found another scrap of video. How an interview with such a famous gif coming from it gets lost is completely beyond me. A Google Doc was also included which contained a bunch of other information, including all the questions asked, some quotes from the interview, and as well as some other photos and videos. I will include this in the description if you are interested in reading and going through more info regarding this case of lost media. And yeah, very interesting stuff. And yeah, thank you for suggesting this case of lost media. Dragon King The Fighting Game Everyone watching this knows about the Super Smash Bros. series. Don't lie to me, you know what Super Smash Bros. is. The original 1999 Super Smash Bros. game for the Nintendo 64 actually began development without any ties to established Nintendo franchises. It was originally titled under Dragon King The Fighting Game. For well over a decade, only three screenshots of this mysterious game was available to the public which came from an interview with series director Masahiro Sakurai. However, on October 20th, 2022, Sakurai out of complete nowhere released gameplay footage for the very first time onto his YouTube channel. This game except for items contains all of the key mechanics which would be later seen in the Super Smash Bros series. Of course, this prototype is still considered lost media as it is not playable or available to the public. I was thinking about this, and I believe Dragon King The Fighting Game was my first ever introduction to Lost Media. I remember watching a Beta 64 video back in like 2013 to 2014, and in this video, Dragon King The Fighting Game was discussed. I genuinely remember like thinking how interesting it was that this Smash prototype was missing and the only thing that existed of it were these few screenshots. I didn't know it at the time, but this was my first introduction to Lost Media. Yeah, very, very cool stuff. Unsettling PSA I got a message from someone on Instagram who has been in search for some unsettling PSA that has been troubling to find. They've posted numerous times on different subreddits and the Lost Media Wiki, and for years, have had no luck. Hi everyone. Does anyone recognize this unidentified PSA, PIF, short film? I saw the PSA slash commercial in February slash March 2018 on YouTube. My sister and I were watching scary ad compilations on YouTube since we got obsessed with the channel Hello, I'm a Pizza. We finished his compilations and started clicking on the side, looking for others. There was a very unsettling PSA slash ad slash commercial slash PIF of a man close up with a long bar, needle, going through his head, speaking about something but neither of us can remember what was said exactly. His face is very close up, and the lights are initially dim. It then zooms out to the doctor or hospital staff working and making a few comments on whatever his situation is. It felt like it went on forever because of the state of shock we were in, but I'd estimate it was less than 1 minute and no longer than 4 minutes. It's been years of us trying to find what the hell that commercial actually was for, and I can't find any proof of it existing anywhere. Some more information in the post was given regarding the PSA. So yeah, have any of you seen this unidentified unsettling PSA? The Beeps The Beeps is a CGI animated children's show broadcasted in the UK by British Television Network on Channel 5. 
The show aired on their early morning milkshake segment from 2007 to 2008. The show followed the daily lives and many adventures of the Beeps, who live on Beep Island. There were 65 episodes and a bonus episode of the show created. Most episodes from this series have become lost, with some being only partially found. Only 10 episodes in full have resurfaced since its airing, along with the pilot episode which released much earlier in 1997. Creepy Stop Motion Man and Mantis Short In the unidentified media section on the Lost Media Wiki forums, a post was created by user Roro, describing an obscure creepy stop motion short about a man and a mantis fighting. I saw this short in the early 2000s on Cartoon Network Netherlands. They had this late night special where they showed all these different shorts. I wasn't supposed to be up to watch it, but the promo made it look way too cool and mysterious. So I had to do it anyway. The short that really stuck with me because it was kind of disturbing was a stop motion short. Might have used rudimentary clay puppets. Where a guy meets up with this man sized mantis thing, and I think at first they're friendly but then a fight breaks out. The mantis knocks the guy out and then tries to roast him over a fire, but the guy escapes, knocks the mantis out with a bottle and then does the same to him. I think there might have been an on-screen title that I couldn't read or even figure out what language it was. I would have been able to read it if it was Dutch, English or German, and I would probably have recognised the language if it was French, Spanish or Italian. I'm tempted to say it came from Eastern Europe, but I can't say that for certain. I think in the opening scene, the guy is outside, travelling to where the mantis guy lives, but it looked like he was running in place while the background moved around him. There was also this kinda creepy high-pitched synth music playing. I wish I could remember more about the special and the other shorts. I think it might have aired twice and I fell asleep pretty early on both times. Yeah, this sounds pretty cool. Does anyone know what this is? Target Australia Animated Commercials This one is for all my fellow Aussies. Between the years of 2008 to 2011, the Australian department store Target Australia had aired a bunch of different computer animated TV ads. These commercial advertisements all mostly contained Target's signature emblem, the slogan, 100% happy at the end of the commercial, and the dude, be happy song, played as background music. Most of these Target Australia commercials are able to be found online. However, of course, many are still considered lost. Brief clips of these lost ads can be seen within two advertising compilation YouTube videos, posted by creative director Shane Dawson on October 15th, 2009, and January 23rd, 2013. And no, not the Shane Dawson you're probably thinking of. But yeah, do any fellow Aussies remember seeing these commercials? Get your free TVs, Half-Life 2 Tech Demo. This was a tech demo shown off at SIGGRAPH 2000 and SIGGRAPH 2001 behind closed doors. The purpose of the tech demo was to show what Valve had been working on with their brand new source engine that was being used to create the upcoming game at that time, Half-Life 2. Within this demo, players would take TVs at a variety of locations and set them to a location while steering clear of striders. In 2003, Half-Life 2 had been leaked to the public, and within this leak, many assets from the Get Your Free TVs tech demo were discovered. These assets included the main player models used in the demo, different textures for a gas mask citizen, and a modified version of a map that was shown in the only screenshot of the tech demo. The tech demo remains only partially found. 60 NES Games in 10 Minutes Part 1 I did a 50 Unusual Cases of Lost Media video not too long ago, and for the last entry I discussed my very own personal case of unidentified media I was struggling to find. I was also certain it was now lost media. 
I was searching for some obscure iOS puzzle game which involved numbers, fingers and a brick background. Some people in the comments tried helping, giving suggestions as to what this game could have possibly been. However, for a long time, no one could identify it. The game was eventually identified. A commenter in the comments section amazingly identified the game I was looking for as very simple game. As it turns out, the game is Lost Media. It seems that the game is no longer playable and appears only one gameplay video exists online, with this one gameplay video as well having no audio from the game in it. Just a small update if you watched that video and were wondering what that game was. For the last entry in this video, I want to talk about another personal case of unidentified media. And similar to last time, I am almost certain this has become lost media. Now, I am looking for a YouTube video, and not just any YouTube video, the first YouTube video I ever watched on this platform. The video was something along the lines of 60 NES games in 10 minutes part 1. It also could have been 60 NES games in 12 minutes part 2, just, just something along those lines. I do remember the thumbnail. The thumbnail of the video was of Mega Man 2, specifically the Woodman stage. There's a chance the thumbnail could be Contra, and I'm just misremembering, but that's what I remember it to be. And I first watched this back in like 2011 I believe, when I was like 7 years old. The video is pretty self-explanatory, just a compilation of different NES games with different NES music playing over the top. I loved this video, I remember watching it over and over again. I can't seem to find it anywhere though. I have searched time and time and again, I have searched for years and yeah, I guess it's gone now. Just to let you guys know, it is not these videos, I checked and although I do remember watching some of them, they are not the specific one I am searching for. But yeah, if you guys could help me find this video, I would be so thankful. I've been searching for this video for years now, and yeah, first video I watched on the platform, so help me find it please.